Hello guys, finally I can continue, sorry for the long wait, I was really busy in real life and uh, last week I was ill, so now I feel a little bit better and we can continue, hopefully finish this now much faster. So we are come to probably the most awaited list, the cards costing 5, this is part 12. And the last two, 10 ranks, ten, ranks 61 to 52. Rank 61 is Counting House from Prosperity. Counting House is on the last rank again. It's a card with the third lowest deviation in this list and was voted last 24 times. Yeah, all cards costing 5 are really strong cards, but some shine more often than other ones. Counting House is one that shines very rarely. The best use may be countering Mountebank. With massive copper in your deck you have a high probability to get many coppers in hand, even if you're only half through the deck. Then you can easily buy a province or a colony with the use of this card only. It also has some really nice synergies with Coppersmith, make all coppers worth a silver, and Chancellor, discard all coppers and put them in hand. But you need a village to play Counting House and one of these cards in one turn, and the probabilities to draw these three cards together are low in a deck full of copper. The better alternative and only real combo is Golem. Buy many Golems and only one Counting House, the Golem will always find the Counting House and discard all other cards. With a Golem in hand you are now guaranteed to get all coppers. Instead you can buy many warehouses, cycle through your deck discarding all cards, right before the reshuffle and then play your counting house. And now there's Beggar, which makes it way easier to get a lot of coppers, but I haven't tried this out yet. It has some other nice synergies, but are very difficult to pull off. For a bank you need additional buys to be worth it. With no real supporters, this card is mostly not worth the effort. Rank 60, Saboteur from Intrigue. Saboteur lost clearly points, but is still on the same rank as last time and now with a much higher consensus. With 9 last places it deserves this low rank even though there is one really big outlier. Saboteur is the worst attack costing 5. Why? There are similar reasons like why Thief is bad. It treasures cards from your opponent's deck without immediate benefit to you, so it's only destructive. And if you aren't able to play Saboteur in each turn at least once, your opponent can catch up easily when he just continues and ignores it or rebuys the trash card if it was essential. Another downside is that the opponent can pick up replacement cards that sometimes aren't that worse or you might even give, give your opponent the opportunity to pick up victory cards in the end game. But on the other side it can lead to big outbursts if you play one or two saboteurs each turn or, the, or if you can even play king's court with it. In games with nomads and chips you are then able to trash the whole deck and all points from your opponent and can easily finish and win. But these cases are so rare, Saboteur is still a bad card for itself. Rank 59, Stash, a promo card. Stash is clearly a bad card too with 6 votes on last place. It lost a bit in consensus, mainly because of that big outlier above 80%. You need 4 stashes to get a province after the reshuffle for sure, and in colony games it's almost useless. But a sure province that you can get only after reshuffle needs you to trigger the reshuffle as often as possible. This means you need supporter cards too. The most obvious ones are a golem, with maximum of one other action, or a few chancellors. Now with scavenger there exists even a more powerful combo for a guaranteed province each turn in a deck with 4 stashes and 2 scavengers. But still, these are e rare edge cases that make stash not worth 2 coins more than silver. Especially at the crucial 5 cost price point you probably find stronger cards than stash, although if you have 5 coins and want a silver anyway, you can pick up a stash unhesitatingly. Rank 58, Contraband from Prosperity. Contraband has nearly the same amount of points but dropped 1 rank. You might notice that really high deviation for a low ranked card which is to myself not really explainable. It has though one really high outlier above 90% and some votes around 50% which led to this deviation. 
Still, it's a bad card, which got 4 last ranks. In the unweighted ranking, it would be still one rank higher on its old rank. The second treasure card in a row in this list. Contraba contraband can be very trappy. Buying it as an opener on 5-2 uh, can be a nice early gold, and the plus buy is very important for finding a substitution for the prohibited card. If there are many good cheap engine pieces on the board and you want gold and a card with plus buy anyway, this can be very good. But most of the time, so embargo yourself practically. And in the late game, this is a dead card because everybody knows you want that province. If you buy it, buy only one, because two or more can really shut you down. And beware of venture plus contraband. Rank 57. Harvest from Cornucopia. Now we come to bigger changes. Harvest lost 5 ranks and 4 percentage points and got more agreement on the same time. It was voted 3 times last with only one rank close above 50%. It would be even one more rank lower in the unweighted list. Harvest is very swingy. In games with uh, very few different cards and a coherent strategy, this is mostly a silver and rarely a gold and really no good card. And it can discard all your good cards you wanted to play the next turn and it can even trigger an unwanted reshuffle. In games with many attacks, especially curses, Harvest can really be a better card. You can then make your curses to money without having them in hand and Harvest can give you easily 4 coins. In a thin deck with a lot of engine pieces where you don't care about actions, Harvest can also be a nice source of virtual money. Harvest has also a nice synergy with Tunnel. But other than that, you rarely want to spend 5 coins for a Harvest. Rank 56, Cash from Hinterlands. Cash is on the same rank as last time and has only lost a little bit in points. It is the first card with no last rank, but still has 5 votes below 5% and only one vote close above 50%. That's the third treasure card so close together. Cash performs differently in different kind of decks. In engine decks with few money, it's just horrible. In big money decks, it's most of the time superior than just the silver, but only a little bit, similar to stash maybe. But it only shines in big decks. For example, gardens with many green cards, let's say Silk Road, simply said in decks where copper isn't a so bad card after all. Also nice is cash in combination with Trader for a gold and two silvers for only five coins. And cash is like silver, not very good in colony games. Rank 55, mine from the base set. Mine is also on the same rank as before and has a pretty high consensus too, the fifth lowest deviation in this list. It has one last rank and no vote above 50% and only one vote above 30%. It would be one rank higher in the unweighted ranking. Mine is one of the first treasure benefit cards you probably got to know. It has the disadvantage of being limited to treasures, so you cannot trash them later into victory cards, but it has the advantage to get the new card immediately in hand. But mine is still slow. A money lender doesn't get you in a card, but it's at least worth a silver in the turn you played it, whereas mine is only worth a copper. But in the long term, mine can be much better. The more often you play the new treasure card, the more mine was profitable. So if you want mine, you want it early. It gets so much better in colony games. First, colony games last longer, and you will probably see your treasure card more often, and mine is a silver if you trash gold for platinum. For a 5-2 opening, Mine Fool's Gold is a pretty decent opening on rank 108. P.S. Don't confuse Mine with Mint. Rank 54 Outpost from Seaside. Outpost is one rank worse than last time with 2 percentage points less than last time. It got a huge boost in consensus on the other side. It has even two last ranks. In the unweighted ranking, it would be even one rank worse. Outpost seems so nice for getting extra turns, but you only get a free card hand. It's like you militia yourself, even worse, you cannot choose the free cards you want to keep. If you really need a plus buy, Outpost can fulfill this need. But even in those cases, it's not better than a workshop in a lot of cases. 
If you want to use it to attack multiple times per turn, it can work, but still, it is another terminal in your deck that can collide. It can really shine in cases where you can guarantee a good card in your next hand. Treasury, Alchemist and Scheme are probably the best combos. Another case where your free card hand isn't that bad, maybe with Minion or maybe a Menagerie, but this isn't very reliable either because one of your free card has to be that Minion or Menagerie. Another combo is Double Tactician Outpost where you can get 8 cards instead of 3. Generally, it's pretty good with duration cards, especially Wharf, Caravan and Haven. You can also get Outpost if you have high action density, but in most other cases you better ignore it. Rank 53 Explorer from Seaside Explorer is 5 ranks higher than last time and 3 percentage points better, but it has also a much higher deviation. It still has 2 last ranks on one side and 3 votes above 40% on the other. The problem with Explorer is, when you already have 2 or 3 provinces and you have 5 coins you want a duchy most of the times. When you have one or none, it only nets you silver in hand most of the times and then there are still other cards that are probably better getting you to provinces than just a silver generating machine. If you compare it to check of all trades, it's better in the silver getting because you can get it in hand, but just worse on all the other parts. So it's pretty decent with alternate victory cards, especially Duke, and you want it in thin decks where you can draw it with a province with high probability. Explorer Chapel is therefore uh, opening on rank 68. And I forgot to mention it's nearly useless in colony games. Rank 52. A tribute from Intrigue. Tribute lost only one rank, but what's much worse, it lost over 6 percentage points. This may come from the three last votes it got. It would be one rank higher in the unweighted ranking. Tribute is another swingy card and even depends on the opponent's deck. You can have really bad luck revealing the same card, then Tribute is really bad. In action heavy decks you get 4 actions, what you only want if there isn't another village around, but then you probably don't want many ca uh, action cards at all. All other combinations can be really nice, for example in big money games, giving you 4 coins most of the times, and later in the game plus 2 cards, 2 coins, or even plus 4 cards. It only really shines in games with dual type cards. Hitting a harem and a nobles is getting plus 4 cards, plus 2 actions, and plus 2 coins, with only one card, that's excellent. But the unreliableness still is Tribute's biggest problem. Forming a strategy around it not only depends on you, your opponent has to cooperate. Thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I will um, record the next session right afterwards. Probably I won't upload it uh, today, but very soon I hope so. So until next time, see you soon. Bye.